with the bad comes the good or opportunities or good things to happen. Um, and I think, uh, so being forced to redirect your energy and do things in a new way isn't necessarily bad, even though negative things happened um, to commence that domino effect in a way. Um, mm. So yes, people were getting sick and dying and yes, travel restrictions were in place and people couldn't do the things they would usually do, but it's forced a lot of innovation um, in everyday life, which potentially we were very comfortable in our everyday life and we weren't thinking about how to do things differently. So I think with the bad comes the good and yin and yang is just such a, yeah, a frontal idea that I have about that. No rain. Folks, uh, hello and welcome back to the Nareen Agarwal show. Today I'm speaking with a guest all the way from Melbourne, Australia. Today I have with me Freya Stockman. She's a great friend of mine and also the founder of a growing tutoring agency in Australia called Get Sight. Freya has spent a lot of her career and educational years in psychology and neuroscience. In Melbourne, she has employed during this lockdown, this year pandemic, a lot of strategies, tips and tricks in a way that she could bring something creative out of her brain and create something rather than sulk and be disempowered during the lockdown. And hence, I have her today as a show guest because I want to share, I want her to share with us how to create your own universe. She has a really cool theme, how to create your own universe and how is she able to create it. So welcome Freya to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm pumped to be here. <laughs> all the way <laughs> from Australia. <laughs> so good to see you join all the way from Australia. See, I'm, I put on some Australia colors uh, for you as well, Freya, uh, yellow, uh, you know, and I've, I've spent about six months of my life in Australia. I, I have to say it's, it's such a beautiful country and uh, I spent a lot of great memories there um, and the nature there is, of course, amazing. Melbourne being one of the best cities that I've ever visited. It's a nice place to be. I'm very lucky to live yeah. here, but uh, I have to say the same about India, which is where we met. <laughs> I yeah, have a very big soft spot for India. So, um, yeah. yeah, the same goes. <laughs> I, th I think it would be cool to cover how we met. Like, would you like to say how we met and how we like are still friends and kept in touch? Yeah, absolutely. But I would love to hear your rendition of how we met, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> what's what's so, your memory of it? <laughs> uh, so, like, I, I was visiting Goa with uh, two of my friends. Goa is this, like, beach destination in India, like, you know, and most of our viewers know. Um, and we had gone to, like, a local pub in the evening uh, with my friends. And I, you were there, I think. You were traveling by yourself, like, solo traveling India. And you were yeah, in the pub. Yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I just like said hi to you and uh, we just started talking about what you do and you started talking about psychology, about life positivity, about uh, so many deep things all of a sudden. And uh, I was like, wow, this, this person is cool. And um, we decided to like be friends on Facebook or Instagram or something. And I think we just since then kept in touch about entrepreneurship, about business, about um, self-development. Uh, and I think since then we've um, always been in touch and um, contributing some positive thoughts, ideas in each other's lives, right? Yeah, we've sort of, I, I remember it started off with a messaging and then we're like, oh, we, we should catch up. Let's have a phone call. And then through lockdown, even we had a couple phone calls and I was walking around yeah. my neighborhood on the phone to you and, you know, time zone didn't seem to matter. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I remember when I met you in the pub, it was this, Irish quite you know tacky pub in Goa <laughs> um, and it was one of the only places open on, on the night because it was kind of off season um, or there wasn't a lot of people and I just remember you were so engaging and so excitable to talk to me and we just had such great chats and yeah, yeah exactly. I was more than happy to exchange numbers and keep in contact so it's been really cool that we've kept in contact over the last two years like it's coming up to two years now so yeah, pretty crazy. <laughs> that is awesome. That is such a cool story. And I'm so happy that we did because I get to learn so much from you. Yeah, same to you. Same to you. I'm yeah. always amazed to hear what you're up to. So it's um, yeah, been a pleasure so far. <laughs> awesome. Freya, so to get into it, please tell us what did you do during this lockdown? What did you create? 
and how is your venture doing please enlighten us with it yeah sure so um essentially uh i started a tutoring agency in lockdown pretty much as soon as lockdown started in melbourne which was actually one of the harshest ones in the world if not the harshest i think it was for more than 100 days um that we weren't allowed to leave the house and um i started a tutoring agency to do with psychology students specifically because i've always done a bit of casual tutoring on the side and what i found was that i'm i'm very good at what i do and i just have developed ways in which to teach students so i thought well what's something that always makes me feel good that i can do during lockdown to take my focus away from the pandemic and living in a state of fear to feeling good about myself that i'm contributing something positive to the world to people who are in need of help so i started a facebook business page super simple um i had an abn which is an australian sort of register number for businesses um you can just be a sole trader as a single freelancer essentially and i just started doing work for cheap real cheap just to get traction through the facebook page and it just sort of got legs of its own and started running and the momentum of it forced me to stay uh keep up to date with it so or keep on top of it so currently um i've got four people working for me i've got a website platform that's about to launch which will automate the bookings from students i've got over 70 students on the books <laughs> um wow. and i've i just found that after the the first 3 months and after i started recruiting tutors to help me because i just couldn't keep up with the demand uh we just kept doubling revenue and it just kept going like that for a few months and i thought i was pretty excited you know the first month that we hit a a milestone of revenue and then the next month we doubled that and i was blown away and then the third month we doubled that again and i just <laughs> i couldn't believe it i just was yeah. shocked <laughs> and i think the momentum of it forced me to keep moving forward so i i didn't really have time to focus on the pandemic and what was going on around me i had to get to work like I either keep up with this beast that I've created or yeah. it's going to run over me and I'm not going to survive. Cool. So it it was good problems, good problems that kept me busy, you know. So um but yeah, so that's essentially what I created and I registered the business as a company to help it scale better for the future for 2021 and I have received applications from more tutors who want to sign up and Yes, I'm very excited for 2021. It's going to be a big one. So that's that is very cool. awesome, Freya. And and yes, yes, there is an aspect of uh, you could say grace, luck, whatever you say. And it, it sounds like you know, yeah, uh, the thing got its own legs and it started running. But but like to be honest, nothing happens without doing the correct things, right? If you don't create the correct atmosphere, if you don't apply the right strategies, if you don't uh, maintain your mindset of growth like that. it will never occur so there must be certain secret strategies and stuff that we always discussed about in the past 2 years about entrepreneurship about how to keep your mindset about how to keep your heart set that helps you create the situation right right definitely definitely i think and, yeah. i feel like i've been in preparation for this year in a way for this in year yeah and and so that's what you call creating your own universe right you you shifted your focus because that's not easy when everything is um so negative out there you shifted your focus so to create all this you had to create your own universe mm-hmm. and that's the theme of the podcast i want to ask you take us into your universe of creating your own universe okay all right so yeah. um i guess when i talk about creating my own universe firstly um i mean creating a um creating a space around you and taking the focus off the outside world because i think what this pandemic around the world has shown in every country is the illusion of stability and security doesn't exist it's it doesn't exist and mm-hmm. a lot if you're relying on the world for security a sense of security and safety and purpose 
Um, and if that is taken away from you, then you're in a bit of a bad place because all of a sudden you're left to your own devices. So what um, the strategies that I've implemented this year, I've, I've taken from lots of philosophers and, and by philosophers, I mean speakers, people who have lived experiences to pass on to people who want to be better versions of themselves. So I guess self-development gurus, I guess, um, to create a space around you where you can still flourish. Um, so I guess the first thing that is super important to do is to strengthen your mental and emotional and spiritual resilience to the outside world by propagating peace within yourself. I think the biggest lesson, one of the biggest lessons I've had this year is that um, if you don't have control of your emotions, such as fear, you will be paralyzed. You won't be able to move forward with your goals. You won't be able to think properly. And um, you really need stability in your, in your mind and your, um, your mind and your um, soul, I guess, to focus on extracurricular goals like building a business. That takes a lot of emotional and mental energy. So key things to do this would be reduce your exposure to media. I think the biggest thing from this year is that the media will constantly try and instill fear. And while it's good to be out up to date with what's going on, if you have it on 24 seven in your household, like I know a lot of people did, you're going to constantly be getting this negative fear and instigating messaging that the world is unsafe, lock, you know, you need to um, lock yourself away and you're going to lose your job and all these bad things are going to happen to you. All your friends are going to die. I think that's obviously just going to naturally put you on an edge um, and it's not going to be helpful for you to be happy or to focus on any goals that you might have. Um, and you'll have a subconscious underlying anxiety. Um, so I think it's important to reduce that mental load and reduce that subconscious anxiety so you can be your best self in the first place. Um, I don't know if that resonates with you, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, because I, I, that's something I took it as a conscious choice. I anyways never watch news and I, I shut it off because it was just too extreme. And I, I, I could considerably see difference in the way my friends that were watching the news the whole time were speaking and the friends that weren't. Because the ones yeah. who were watching it the whole time were absolutely paranoid about everything. Yes, absolutely. I found the same in Australia. So I think that is a theme in human the human condition that rings true anywhere, um, regardless of where you're from. So I think trying to limit the information, like control the information that is you're allowing to enter your mental load um, and your mental space. Um, so that for me is number one. Um, and secondly, it's also, like you said, you're, if, if you have friends who are feeding into this negative and fear-inducing information and really exacerbating their feelings about it you almost have to create mental and emotional boundaries for people um, because if you allow other people's energy to influence you then that's also going to impact the way that you think and feel about yourself and the world and I think yeah fear has a funny way of stopping us in our tracks and making us give up um, mm -hmm. or shut down or panic when really we don't necessarily have to do those things um, so I think limiting information from the media and also creating safe boundaries around how much you feed into other people's ideas about the situation as well. Um, second step, um, focus within. Okay. If the outside world isn't our playground anymore, um, identify aspects within yourself to improve. So even when the world seems to be falling apart or is stalled, you can maintain purpose and pursue your own goals and self-actualize and still have a sense of purpose. Uh, so mm. for me, that was focusing on what I could offer to the world, which was tutoring uh, and planning projects. So I got to work, I created these goals and I thought about, well, what could I do in a creative way to maximize this idea and this idea and how can I bring this to life? So that first step was the business page or the Facebook page. And from there it led to, admin and invoicing online and the web page being designed and it just started your goals change the goalposts change but 
the project itself was the thing that got me started and it was my saving grace in the end for that 100 plus day oh. lockdown wow. um so I yeah. like I like when you say like focus within and then you talk about how can you focus within you can focus within by focusing on what you can offer because I think in in the pandemic or any time you start thinking about what's going to happen to me what's happening to me from the outside the focus is totally gone gone from you and you just give the whole focus to the outside but when you start asking that question what can I offer automatically the focus goes within okay what can I give and what can I offer and that helps you create your own universe in some way and bring out that creativity. So I think that's really powerful, Freya. Thank How you. Yeah. By <laughs> I, asking well, the question, what can you offer? Hmm. Yeah, what can you offer? And I think it immediately takes you from a state of fear to, okay, let's get to work. What can I do to be empowered and have control of this situation in a way that's helpful yeah. and positive? Um, and for most years of their lives, they have their career ahead of them that they're, they're dreaming about. And in order for them to get there, they need to perform at a high level. And I can help people perform at a high level in that very niche, small group of people. Um, but the funny thing about a niche, which you probably would agree with in terms of business, if you find a niche and then there will be a demand for you if what you offer is valuable. And that's what I found is, it's super niche. Psychology students are super niche. Um, yeah. But there seems to be sort of a conveyor belt of demand for it because there's nobody else doing what I'm doing. So yeah. that's the cool thing about having an idea. You might think, oh, that won't be popular or no one will want that. But you never know. You may as well have a go. Um, and like you said, there's an air of grace and luck when it comes to some ideas and some things take off. And for me, I think that I always sort of had an inkling that it was something that would take off because there was demand for it in some capacity. Yeah. Um, Niche. They say the riches are in the niches, you know, you always got to go for a niche, you know? (laughs) Yeah. That's that's where the gold is. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. So, so Freya, so far in creating your own universe, we, we learned about one is strengthening your uh, mental resilience. And mm-hmm. second is focusing on, you know, within, focusing within. So you strengthen your mental resilience, you focus within, and then mm-hmm. what do you do? All right. Step three, you've now got to set a schedule. You've got to create a routine. So you've yeah? got okay. some goals. <laughs> you've got some things you want to work on. Well, yeah. you've got to be a planner. Like you said, Just before, I'm a planner. (laughs) As you can see from this whiteboard behind me, this is where all the magic (laughs) happens. (laughs) So you want to create a schedule. Okay, I'm going to get up every morning at this time. You're going to create, and the reason a routine is helpful, worst case scenario, say in the pandemic you lost your job, you couldn't go outside, um, you would quickly find that you run out of, purpose in a way and creating a routine and stability so creating a routine helps to manifest that stability okay I know that every morning I'm getting up at this time and I'm doing two hours on this and then I'll have a break and then I might have two hours of downtime and then I'll for two hours I might focus on my project again or I'll do something else and I think what that helps prevent is a lot of um Uh, uncertainty and boredom because if you don't have a schedule and you have lots and lots of free time what you find is you sort of start to yeah I guess your mental health can deteriorate you lose purpose and you just sort of feel like you're floating through space and it causes anxiety but if you have a routine even if you don't have a job to go to or you don't have this to go to you've got stability you've created the stability and the certainty each day of what's going to happen so that there's less anxiety about your day-to-day and what you're going to do with your time. Um, And that will facilitate any project or goals. And your goals might just be um, you want to do, learn how to do yoga. So every morning you might watch a YouTube video on yoga. That's your routine. It's a nice way to start the day. And then you might start an online business like I did. And so two hours of this time you'll spend on that. So 
I don't know if I'm rambling at the moment now, but that's essentially yeah. the purpose of a routine. It's so important. It reduces your mental load if you know. I think this is so important. Yeah. Um, so, sorry, but like what I was saying is I, I can just relate to you so, so much. And this is such an important point. Um, I saw a lot of people, um, they took care of their health. They had a very good diet. Uh, you know, they spent a lot of good family time when they were working, right? Because they were in a routine and that routine was set by their company that told them, hey, you got to come in at eight, leave at five or like come in at nine, leave at five. So they had a routine and then they had other things built upon that. But when that was taken away, when the company said, or they lost their job or they were working from home, the company wasn't setting the routine for them. And it was then time for them to set a routine for themselves because you really hit the root cause. If there is no routine, there is no route for you to go to your goals and do what you want. Yes. So exactly. Like it's, 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 you hit the root cause because a routine creates exactly all the things that you're saying. Or what do you want to add? You want yes. To add? No, no, that I, I absolutely, that's a really great metaphor. If you don't have a routine, you don't have a route to get where you need to go. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, <laughs> and I think, yeah, if you, I think a lot of us, it kind of comes back to this point that a lot of people rely on external factors like a company or business that they work for to set the rules um, and set their purpose. But I think purpose comes from within with or without a job and a sense of stability comes from within the ability to uh, limit white noise around you so that you can still be at peace even when, life kind of feels like it's falling apart I think that's the biggest takeaway for a lot of people hopefully this year is you really need to be more self-reliant and autonomous in the way that you conduct your life yes having a job there are certain rules that come with it if they want you to be there at 9 a.m until 5 p.m or something like that then of course you got to play by those rules and fit your life around it but when all of that is taken away, who are you? What's your routine? How are you going to set the rules? It's super important so that you can stay healthy, both physically, mentally, and self-actualize. Because I think a lot of mental health issues like anxiety and depression comes from people feeling like they're not who they should be or where they should be. So self-actualizing has a, been a really key factor in my life goals, moving towards some sort of goal always. Um, and I think even if you're in lockdown, you can still move towards goals and people, of course, some people might say this is not the time to focus on your goals, focus on self-care, but self-care is a goal. Uh, looking after yourself and relaxing and reading and you can set goals for that, but it still makes you feel like you've got purpose and you're moving forward. So, um, yeah, that's sort of the key takeaway that I had from this year. Wow. That's a powerful third point in how to create your own universe, creating <laughs> a routine, creating a routine. I am a big fan of that uh, su suggestion because I think it's, it's made me uh, much better than I used to be when I didn't create a routine. But after I started creating a daily, weekly routine for myself, I just uh, saw my mental stability, capability and productivity just shoot through the roof. It was the yeah. same me, but without a routine and with a routine, totally different. Totally different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think also part of that is having some sort of rituals. Like for me, I would wake up at uh, 6.30 or 7 a.m. I would light some incense because for me, that's quite a spiritual experience of smelling incense. And it sort of makes me feel like I'm meditating and mm. making um, and then also putting some Zen or yoga type um, ashram music on mm -hmm. um, so if because for me meditation is so important but what I did was I incorporated those elements to create a very peaceful environment in my room and then I would be on my laptop doing things working on the business in some capacity but it it felt like it was an extension of meditation for me that this was my safe place and music and smell is such a key part of our how we feel about things our emotions so if you can trigger happy emotions with smell like your um like maybe an incense burner like i did or essential oils and you create almost like yeah a really beautiful 
environment in your own room, like you're at a day spa or you're, you're praying or you're, wherever you, your safe space is, you can create that in your house um, and rituals around that so that you, yeah, yeah, so you can create those, those positive experiences with or without your church or with or without where you go to pray or um, be quiet or nature. You know, you can make that in your own space. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. That is awesome. Thank you for that point, Freya. Building a routine and how we can be creative in incorporating things in our routine so that uh, we take care of ourselves and creating our own universe. And Freya, after that, is there something left? How do you create your own universe? So um, I guess uh, get creative. So for me, um, if there's something that you enjoy but you can't do it in that same capacity, this is the perfect time to innovate, get creative and think outside the box. Uh, So for me, uh, a big part of what I like to do outside of business and that more serious side of life is photography. But, you know, part of photography is going out going to locations, going to studios, shooting are cut off from all of those things. Um, you can't meet up with people. You have to stay in your house. So for me, I, that forced me to be innovative and think, well, how can I do photo shoots with multiple people, connect with people around the world? And I thought, well, why don't I use Zoom, what we're using right now, to do photo shoots and create art from my room again, all from my room. Um, and Zoom created, like, was the perfect way to do that. So I have photographed um, over 15 people now, including yourself. Yeah, thank uh, you very great. much. That's the first photography shoot I've ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were great. You were good. Um, thank you. And, yeah, so I think... I, use, I had to use Zoom. I had to think outside the box. But actually some of my best art has come from those Zoom photo shoots, wow. which is ironic because the quality of the camera was limited by whatever device you're using. Um, you're limited by the space and the environment because you're shooting somebody in their environment. You can't really see what the dimensions of areas are. You have to really communicate with that person to help you take the shot. And yeah, it's, it's sort of taken a life of its own. Once again, I just set a goal that I want to do photo shoots. How can I do this photo shoot? Well, I'll use zoom, which is the devices that I had at the ready. And it just goes from there. And I think being creative is the best solution to any problem. You don't have to follow, uh, you don't have to follow the status quo or what people consider normal in order to do things that make you happy. So um, for me, innovation has been a key part of this year in all respects. How can I do this better? How can I do this in a new way? That's always been my frame of mind this year, which has really helped me to navigate the challenges of COVID and lockdown. (laughs) Wow. So the fourth step is getting creative and doing what you enjoy. And, and being creative with that. Freya, how, how cool is that? That is so cool, by the way. I remember the first time you messaged me saying, hey, you want to do a photo shoot? And I was like, how is that <laughs> going to be possible? And you said, it's going to be on Zoom. I was like, what? A photo shoot on Zoom? I've never, ever heard that in my life, in my entire life. Uh, and that was, that was so unique. That was so cool. I remember saying it to so many of my friends. Hey, guys, you know, I'm going to be part of a photo shoot and it's going to be on Zoom. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so unique. And, and we did it. We did it. We did um, it. It happened. Yeah. We did it. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I think the the coolest thing about that whole project, which is still in the works because, you know, the business has kind of taken over, but I think the coolest thing about that project is no longer are you limited to only photographing or creating art with people in your neighbourhood you can create art from with people all around the world. So I took photos of you in Calcutta and I took yeah. photos of my friend in Finland and France yeah. and New Zealand and other parts of Australia. So all of a sudden the world opened up to me from the confines of my room. 
and I didn't feel so alone anymore. And it was also a good excuse to catch up with you and chat to people yeah. and learn something new and create and try something new. So I think the biggest, one of the, another takeaway that I've had from this year, so many revelations, yeah. um, <laughs> is you really are only confined to your beliefs about what you can and can't do. So I think if you remove the idea that you can't do this, you can't do that just because certain resources aren't available anymore, I think there is a way to reimagine or reinvent the wheel a bit. And mm. that's something that I think everybody can do. Obviously, other pe some people have limited resources. They may not have a computer or camera like I did. I know that I have a lot of privilege with the things that I have at my disposal that I I had prior to the lockdown, but I think there's ways of going, you can, you can navigate and try new things and find ways of doing things in a different way with or without those things, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Wow. Creating your own universe. So Freya, would you, would you like to summarize again, for creating your own universe? Like what are the steps and like, you know, what are the action points? just so that, you know, we have a, a better, clearer um, and more concise picture of, from all that we heard. Yep, sure. So um, get rid of the noise, strengthen your emotional, spiritual and mental resilience and inner peace. Um, so do this by cutting out negative information that is constantly being fed to you by the media. Uh, practice anything that brings you peace, meditation, journaling, writing down your thoughts and feelings, um, creating boundaries with other people who may have very strong opinions that impact the way that you think and feel about mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. um, second, focus within. So uh, do not rely on the external world for your sense of purpose and stability. You need to generate that from inside. So think about what you can offer even if you think you have nothing to offer, of course you have something to offer. Um, there is so many ideas or skills that people have that they don't even realise they can contribute to the world, not even for money, but just generally speaking. Um, and essentially redirect your focus from the pandemic to your personal growth. So um, instead of you decide what you fixate and obsess over, you can decide to obsess over the negative or the positive. And uh, I think that will serve a lot of people well and create a routine. Okay. So if you've got these goals or some ideas that you want to bring to life, well, now you've got to create the routine to facilitate those goals. So uh, create a schedule Create a schedule for when you're going to wake up every morning, some exercise, self-care and your goals. If you still have a job um, and you didn't lose your job, then, you know, you can still fit this in around all of that. Um, for instance, for me, I've still been working full time this whole year. So it's it and I'm very lucky for that reason. Um, but regardless of me working full time, I still managed to fit in time to get up super early to work on the business and, and work on it after work and sometimes on the weekends a little bit here and there. Um, so routine is so important with or without a job. Um, I think that's a big thing. And then get creative. Okay, there's going to be challenges that pop up along the way. COVID's proven that. Normal mundane life can become challenging and building a business or working on some sort of project is challenging. So get creative, be innovative, rethink the wheel. What, how can you do this differently? How can you achieve this um, satisfaction that you get from certain activities in other ways? And I think all of those four things have been the main key points for me this year with everything that's happened and is still happening. And um, I don't think I would have maintained such a positive outlook about life if I didn't follow each of these points and practice them every day. So um, being in the world's strictest lockdown comes with its challenges. Um, and there were, there were points where I did feel sad and down and anxious, but um, I'm not superhuman. <laughs> but all of these strategies helped me stay the course 
and limit those feelings that could potentially impact you really negatively. Wow. Fred, sounds like it's been a, a year of a lot of growth for you, you know, a year that could have been this way. You made sure you take it that way. Um, and by that way, I mean, you know, you employed your creativity, you focused and you created your own universe. Um, so it is a year that must have also come with a lot of lessons and you've shared some. Uh, what, what are some key lessons that you've learned through this journey and through creation of all this um, that you would like to share with us? Yeah, so um, the, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the idea of yin and yang comes to mind. So with the bad comes the good or opportunities mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. good things to happen. Um, and I think uh, so being forced to redirect your energy and do things in a new way isn't necessarily bad, even though negative things happened um, to commence that domino effect in a way. Um, mm. So, yes, people were getting sick and dying and, yes, travel restrictions were in place and people couldn't do the things they would usually do, but it's forced a lot of innovation um, in everyday life, which potentially we were very comfortable in our everyday life and we weren't thinking about how to do things differently. So I think with the bad comes the good and yin and yang is just such a, yeah, a frontal idea that I have about that. Um, and nothing is permanent. We are in a constant state of adaptation and change. You cannot control your environment as much as you think you can. Mother nature has a funny way of teaching us this. Uh, so it's really important to make um, your inner world safe and secure so that you can weather any storm, as cliche as that might sound. <laughs> um, that is awesome. That is awesome, Freya. Yin and yang. There's always the good and the bad. And yes. Yeah. Adaptation to change. Change is the only constant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. So Freya, like good 2020, a lot of lessons. Um, and you said you have plans for the next year coming up. Uh, so what are some of your plans and goals and how do you look forward to moving with this momentum that you're carrying in 2021? Yeah, so um, I do have many, many big plans for 2021, uh, a lot of which I thought I would have done already. I think a lot of us can underestimate what we're capable of achieving in a year, but I definitely can see myself achieving them in 2021 now that I've got the business up and running. So uh, my goals for 2021 are actually on that whiteboard behind me. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, so my goals are... Uh, training more tutors. So now I'm in the process of trying to get as many tutors on board by February, which is when the majority of students go back to university. And I want to be ready for the demand because I've already experienced this year how high the demand can be. And so I need to be ready for that. Uh, so although I have four tutors now, they all have their own availability. So I need to make sure I've got at least 10 tutors by February on the books ready to go who can, who are trained up and ready to take on the work. Uh, so that's goal number one. Goal number two, um, have the website fully launched and functioning. So that will take a lot of the workload off my shoulders in terms of admin and bookings. And third, uh, create uh, more digital assets. And by digital assets, I mean products that are not physical but digital. So uh, things like instruction, ex instructional guides, templates for students to buy that will help them get a nice even footing when they start their studies um, at any level and at a high standard. Uh, and uh, I want to sell those to the broader population of Australia. So um, targeting psychology students but there are thousands of psychology students so hopefully I can create what uh, what I call sales funnels um, which some of your viewers might not know about but sales funnels essentially is a step-by-step -step process that takes somebody from an advertisement to a product and um, sells them yeah sells them something of value so I want to create things like that to sell these digital assets um, fourth, I want to create a, web, a webinar, 
a weekly webinar series like you do <laughs> with your podcast. Mm, yeah. um, I want to create webinars where students can give back to students. So tutors who work for me can create a presentation about their experiences or skill sets that they can pass on to students and they can run their own webinars through the Get Psyched business and uh, it can really be a closed loop, past students helping um, future students and so on. And uh, what else? Let me look at my whiteboard just quickly. <laughs> wow. Um, Do you have it all written down? Yes. It's actually looking a little bit bare. Um, you might see there that it's looking a little bit bare yeah. in those areas, and that's because a lot of the goals that I had over the last couple of months I've completed, so that's really nice. Wow. To and see. That is <laughs> but, um, awesome. But, yeah, though, that's my plans for 2021 and I'm feeling very grateful for these good problems that have landed in my lap. I'm definitely busier than I was, but the momentum has helped me, like I said earlier, like the momentum keeps you pushing forwards. You don't have time to listen and take in negative information. If you have too much time on your hands you leave, and you allow information to come in without any sort of filter, it's very easy to let things impact you and you become a different person. So this business has really been my saving grace for 2020. And if there's further lockdowns, I know that I'll be able to get through it because of these strategies that I've implemented. So I highly, highly recommend that people um, implement them. And they're not strategies that I've created from thin air. They've come from different sources over the last few years of self-development um, seminars that I've been to or people I've spoken to. So um, it's just me sort of putting into a more tight knit step-by-step -step process that helped me this year. So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. One last final question that I have for you is how do you use that whiteboard? Like what's your strategy of using a whiteboard and how is it helpful? Yeah. So um, I said, so the, the black squares there are dot points essentially. Um, yeah. And yeah. What I find that writing down your ideas is so important because mm -hmm. if you don't write them down, they're in thin air and you can't draw on them easily and you can get flustered when you try and remember information. So I write everything down and I put it in a step-by-step -step fashion of what I can do easily and the bigger ideas that I can let I can do later so that I'm not feeling overwhelmed. So everything on this side of the board are my big my big, big ideas that I just mentioned for 2021, which I still haven't gotten to yet. And anything on this side are things that I can do to get the business up and running. So that was wow. um, setting up the business page, creating instructions for tutors so I can train them, um, creating templates so that the services are more streamlined and easier to run so you're not starting from scratch every time. Um, def uh, doing online invoicing so signing up to zero invoicing a little shout out there not advertised just <laughs> um and also um restructuring the business for tax purposes getting a business account so that the income and expenses is all coming from the one account um which i wasn't doing for a while there which is you know rookie mistake when you start a business and mm -hmm. Just generally um, trying to innovate. How can I keep track of bookings when I don't have a website? How can I keep track of um, payments? And it, it, I just was constantly forced to update the way that I was doing things. So all of that functional stuff was on this side and all the big ticket items are there, wow. which I'll get to. That's pretty cool. Freya, thank you once again. Thank you so much for being part of this podcast and coming and sharing with us um, your 2020 and how you used it to create your own universe and get the creative juices flowing. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Definitely something we've been trying to do for a while. And I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm very grateful that we stayed in touch. So this has been a whole lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. Thanks a lot, Freya. I hope we get to implement the strategies that you shared to create our own universe.